Hello and welcome. So in this video, I want to cover what is the general process for creating a footprint from your data sheet. So let's just start all the way from the top and understanding what a footprint really is. When you have a printed circuit board, there are devices that go on the PCB, such as these ones. We have capacitors, resistors, integrated circuits and chips. And these devices, in order to actually attach to your PCB, you need to have some pieces of exposed copper where you can put some solder on them. See here. And then you can use that solder to attach the device to the PCB, whether it's a through hole device, which are not shown here or a surface mount device, which there are a lot of them. Oh, actually we have a couple, we have a through hole chip over here. It looks like. So now to understand the footprint is the most important step first. That is the area under the device. That area has a special arrangement of surface mount pads or through hole pads that make it possible for you to attach the device to the PCB. So it's the area under the device. That's the footprint. Now there's a nice article here from ultra librarian. I came across, this is the footprint creation guideline and process. You can find a bunch of other articles that talk about this, but this is a decent one. There's the manual creation from data sheets. So what you do is you go and find a device that you want for your printed circuit board. Then you find the data sheet from the manufacturer. The data sheet has all the good information, both electrical and mechanical data. Typically you're going to have a recommended land pattern or footprint for the device, the chip or whatever you're using, but many times you won't, but they will give you the measurements of the device itself. You can take those measurements from the data sheet for the device and somehow create a footprint. So how do you do that? Well, you get the dimensions for the device itself and there's a certain standard called the IPC 7351B standard. This is an IPC standard that tells you what things you need to look at for all the, well, almost all the different types of packages out there and the way in which you can calculate mapping from the device dimensions itself to the area under the device known as the footprint or land pattern. So this says, how do you take the numbers from the data sheet and put it into the area under the device. Now this is for purchase for whatever price they're going with at the time. And you may not be able to buy it, or you may not want to buy it. It's fine. If you don't, what you can do, if you want to design to the IPC standard is go to pcblibraries.com and download their free reference calculators. So there's, here's this one for SMD reference calculation and also the play to through hole reference calculator. You can download those. Those are Excel spreadsheets that do automatic calculations based on this IPC 7351B standard. And they, they take the, the numbers you give it from the, from the device data sheet and create good calculations or estimates for your footprint. Then with that calculated for your SMD footprint, you can use that as a guide to draw the rest of your footprint with the proper dimensions. Uh, if you use, let's say you hand draw it or do it in Visio, usually you put those numbers directly in a software tool, like whatever ECAD soft you, you want to use and then move, go on from there, but you can do it by hand too. All right. So yeah, the overall process is, first of all, we understand what footprints are. It's the arrangement of pads underneath the device itself. Then you go to the data sheet for the device. If you, they don't have a recommended land pattern, the next best thing is the dimensions for the part itself. And this will take more time, but you get the dimensions for the part. You put it in this tool. And then you can extrapolate the data from that footprint calculator to create all of, or the rest of the footprint dimensions. And then you create the footprint in your ECAT software, then add it to your library. That's the overall process for IPC 
uh, standard calculations. Now you can do your footprints to non IPC standard. That's perfectly fine. And that a lot of recommended land patterns from the manufacturer may not be IPC, but work better for the footprints. So really, uh, the biggest thing I would say is if you have a recommended land pattern from the manufacturer, use that. I like to use that. Now, by the way, if you are getting some value from this video, like decent value, then I'd really appreciate it if you click the thumbs up button. If you like this video, just give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below and ask your questions, make any comments or recommendations you have for land pattern. There's a lot of tools out there. Okay. These are not the only ones there. There are many. And yeah, if that's helpful, let me know. All right. Also subscribe to the channel. If you want more information like this, if you can make suggestions to the channel and I'll just upload what I know and what I find out for PCB design and engineering. All right. So that's the overall process. You get your device data sheet. You get footprint dimensions from the device data sheet dimensions, the device dimensions on the data sheet or recommended land pattern. You get your footprint dimensions. You make your PCB footprint in your ECAD software and you are on your way. All right. Thanks for watching.